HiSec Buyback offers 90% GDA anywhere in HiSec. Simply go to HiSec.EveBuyback.com, appraise your items, create a contract, and get paid quickly. your life well welcome to talking stations uh today is wednesday january 12th i'm your host shen alongside our panelists uh mal how's it going going well uh and then also our engineer slash panelist nick bison hey happy day everybody yeah so today uh first of all i was I don't know if it's too late yet, but Happy New Year. Uh, so this is our first uh, Wednesday show um, in 2022. Um, so today we have two MERs, uh, unlike before where we usually only have one, but today we have two. So the MER from the, uh, both November and December of 2021. Uh, the reason for that is CCP had some technical difficulties on their end, so they couldn't release uh, the MERs beforehand uh, for the November one, so they just decided to release two at the same time. Uh, so let's start with uh, the MERs. So uh, Mal, do you have anything that you want to point out uh, to start with? Yeah, I think there are a couple interesting stories here. Um, if we look down at the, uh, the first graph in this, um, the first graph in the scroll, if you look if you, you scroll down, yeah, that's the one. Um, you can see there, I think the most interesting um, figure here is that yellow line. That's the amount mined. And you can see there was a big crest in that number. Um, let's see. That was mid to late October. Yeah, that's right. Mid to late October. And it's fallen since then. And I guess the the natural thought here is, does it have anything to do with the uh, rock wall changes? And I don't think that it does, um, because the chronology doesn't really work out for that. The rock wall changes were early December, and as you can see from the dates, the um, the wave had already uh, crested and then fallen before the rock wall changes were implemented. And uh, we can see also in the in the graph that is um, that shows the regional figures, which is I think the next one down. Oh yeah, I think I went too far. Hold on. Oh yep, this is it. Yeah, if no, um, next one I think. All right. That so we're looking for the mining value per region? Yeah. Total total mining value. It's the fifth one down. All right. I'm getting there. There we go. Yeah, so, yeah. so if we add up those uh, those leading bars, what we'll find is that... What we'll find is that uh, Winterco mined about... 3.7 trillion in October, but only 1.2 trillion in December. Um, Imperium mined about 5 trillion in October, but only about 2.3 trillion in December. And that test, which is now an outer passage, mined about uh, 650 billion in December, down from about 1.3 uh, trillion in October. So there's significantly less mining happening now in uh, New Eden than there was. Um, in October, and that is despite a significant uh, buff to uh, to exhumers and to barges. So, I think that what is happening here is that a lot of people who were formerly in uh, work walls are not mining as much anymore as they used to because they're not as effective as they were, and it takes time to retrain into exhumers. Um, there's also an issue with multi-boxing uh, exhumers, even though it's true, as we've heard before on the show, that um, a Hulk mines about as much as a Rorqual. If you just go by ISK per cubic meter, anybody who uses exhumers will know that they're much more attention hungry 
than rock walls were. I mean, that was one of the big advantages, right, of uh, mining with a rock wall is that you didn't have to constantly babysit the thing. But, you know, with the exhumers, you got to be on the ball. Or, excuse me, with um, hulks. You really need to be on the ball for that. I think you bring up two really good points there. The first, obviously, being that retrain time. Because you could skill all the way into a, a rock without bothering with exhumers. And if you're not going to slap down, um, you know, injectors, you're looking at 30 to 37 days to be effective in an exhumer, you know, assuming most of the base skills are already under control. And the second thing you brought up that I, I think really hits the nail on the head is the attention. You know, I used to be able to go out with three rorks and kind of pay attention. I'm out there now with four Mackinaws and I got to watch what the hell I'm doing all the time, you know, just to keep things flowing. So I think those are two really valuable reasons of why we may be seeing the, uh, the depression on the mining. Oh yeah. Right. I, I decided uh, this past week to train my main into exhumers finally and going from uh, barge skills at four to, and astrogeology at four, I'm going to not be able to fly an exhumer until my alliance's moon pulls in March. Right. So some people need time to retrain because there is very little overlap between a work wall and exhumer skill sets. And some people will probably just liquidate their work walls, uh, pilots and move on to other kinds of uh, PVE. So you, so you combine that depression in the total amount of mining available, at least for work wall pilots. So, well, that's one part of the story. The other part is that if you were already in an exhumer, you're mining more already and you don't have to do anything. Right. So you, might have an exhumer if you were really big into mining in high sec or low sec, probably less so in wormhole space. You just isk tank your ships out there. Um, that is, you fly cheaper ships and figure, you know, you're bound to lose it, but it won't hurt very much. So those types of mining get more productive right away because people are already in the ships that got buffed, right? But in null sec, uh, exhumer was not your primary mining platform, so that type of mining is down. So that, that creates some, uh, some downward pressure, some upward pressure, but uh, you also have to factor in that, um, uh, what was I looking at here? Oh, there are, there are more resources in space as well, right? So... Well, I know we uh, kind of offline earlier had mentioned that I don't believe anything is showing the, uh, the infamous residue. So even though there's a lot more out there, what we're seeing is what's actually captured, not what's lost. Yeah, we we tried to get clarity on this from uh, CCP earlier in the day, but we weren't uh, able to get an answer in time to uh, you know to pass that information on yet. So we don't know whether the MER includes wastage or or not. So I think the story of mining over the last couple of months is you have fewer miners out there, but they're tending to mine more effectively, and that's kind of creating that flat that you see after the uh, the wave. As for what actually caused that wave in October, I'm not sure. It may have to do with Winter Co. preparing for war or something to do with their plans, because a lot of that mining was happening in uh, Winter Co. territory in Vail. Um, but I don't know for sure what caused it. Yeah, uh, looking forward, um, I, I think like you guys said, uh, that we are seeing a nerf to locals uh, in terms of mining yield, but we're, we're seeing a, a big buff to consumers as well. So do you guys think it's going to balance over, let's say after the skills uh, requirements are completed by those pilots who, are, who still likes to mind uh, even after the changes? Do you think, uh, let's say in January or February, that those mining amounts going to go up or going to go down? Yeah. All right. Hey, um, Val, or Mal, would it be uh, of value to you for me to slip to the December same chart so you can look do a comparison back and forth or how do you want to approach that well yeah you can look at the september one but note the number note the scale of this graph and then note the scale of the one afterwards you'll see how dramatic the difference is. yeah because this one tops out looks like uh 1.9 trillion is way up at the top that's right yeah the I thought it was really interesting to see Veil of the Silence surpass Delve in mining because traditionally the 
although the language barrier keeps me away from a lot of the information it's traditionally it's been the perception has been that chinese alliances don't mine nearly as much as they rat yeah so you see that on the last graph you had 1.9 trillion was the top region and on this one it's like 850 billion that's how sharp the decline in mining was um what is uh, yeah, yeah veil yeah <clears throat> Vale the Silent, who's on the top in December, was number two. It was Delve, then Vale, both over 1.9 billion in December. They're, you know, it's Vale, then Delve. Looks like, what, 850-ish? Yeah, 1.9 1. 1. trillion versus about 850 billion at the top. Of course, we have to keep in mind, though, that Imperium uh, spans over three regions. So we have to include uh, Delve, Fountain, and, uh, and Aquarius. And if you put those together, uh, I think they're more than a uh, uh, Oh, yeah. Return. Yeah, because Fountain's number three here in December. So, yeah, they're, I mean, they're solid, solid numbers. Now, granted, you're right. They are considerably lower. Yeah. So, but Imperium has a lot of rebuilding to do. You know, they're getting their infrastructure back. They're getting their members back into the groove of, uh, you know, mining and ratting and earning that income. Um, well, Winterco, on the other hand, is, uh, you know, deployed, as we've heard. So um, I guess it's normal to think that Imperium would be able to outmine Winterco, all things being uh, equal. And it looks like they're on their way toward regaining their pre war status as, you know, the premier uh, industrial power in uh, New Eden. Yeah, I mean, in terms of deployment, um, as far as I can tell, it shouldn't affect them as much uh, from what I'm seeing. Uh, it will affect them to some degree where, let's say, um, at evenings, uh, like in AOTZ, that they are going to have constant battles, reinforcements, fleas going out, things like that. Uh, but m for the majority of time, um, I think, their workers are still getting the green lights and still uh, out there mining. Um, uh, I think there will be other regions. I, I think deployment to down south will be one of them, but it shouldn't affect as much as we're seeing here. Yeah. Um, so uh, any other comments on the, the mining? Not on the base that I have. Yeah, I, I think we're good with uh, this section. Uh, so I guess we'll move right. on to the next part. Yeah, in that case, let's go to daily net ISK faucets. All right, give me a moment. Or excuse me, to top 10 sinks and faucets over time. Takes a little bit to scroll effectively. <laughs> yeah, so with all this um, sinks and faucet, uh, just a reminder, we just had uh the winter nexus event ended in december so coming up uh we're gonna see that having an effect and also uh in coming up uh right now it's gonna be the february valentine's day event if i believe i'm not wrong uh it's garista bunny one uh or is it something like that uh oh i think that's yeah. easter egg but well, we actually have the valentine's day one is angel cartel oh, yeah oh. yeah uh, no, uh, keep going, Nick. Yeah, so we actually have three events on the uh, near horizon. We have the Doctor Who event, which starts, uh, I think, tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and, 13th, yeah. Yeah, so that's going to drop, you know, PVE tokens and boosters and so forth. And then you have the uh, the Easter, is it the Valentine's one and then the Easter one. So you have like three on the horizon, I think. Uh, it. Although I, I don't think we know, yeah, I, I don't think we know exactly how the Doctor Who event is gonna play out, uh, because for the other events, it's basically like a repeat from previous years, and all those events are standardized. I would say to to the degree that we have seen before. But Doctor Who, I think, means the first ever crossover event, so maybe the reward uh, may have a chance to be in different forms than what we uh, traditionally know of. Uh, so we have to wait and see. Well, we know some part of it from Hobo Links. We know that we're going to get the same uh, basic, potent, extended accelerators. 
Uh, we know there will be special filaments. Apparently there will be uh, blueprints for the filaments. That's new. Previously you had to find a filament or it had to be given to you through the login campaigns. Um, but you're right, there's still a lot about that event that, uh, you know, that we don't yet know. Apparently it's, it's uh, going to be themed towards uh, beginners. And you can tell that by the kinds of uh, ships that the filaments allow in. Um, all right, so uh, Shen, as you uh, pointed out, we just recently had this Winter Nexus event, and one of the main ways that that paid out was by dropping Overseer effects. That's that enormous blue spike there. And we can see that you know a lot of people participated in that event. It looks like it was real successful, put a lot of ISK in people's uh, pockets. That's great. Um, there's one other, uh, and I'll return to that in a moment. There's one other... Um, Thing going on in the top 10 sinks and faucets graph that I want to talk about one more. No, yeah, there we go. You can see there's another really dramatic uh, change here, and that's the transaction tax. Um, so this seems like ancient history now, but um, back during the Grand Heist event in July of last year, um, CCP initiated a tax holiday. They, they slashed everybody's taxes. It lasted for three months, and that's why you can see that uh, that graph goes up for a while. Of course, this is a faucet, so as it goes up, it trends toward zero, and that means less ISK is coming out of the game. As it trends downward, that means more ISK is coming out of the game. Um, okay, so there's the tax holiday starts in July. It runs for three months, and then October, uh, CCP introduces a tax overhaul, and what, what this, this tax change basically did two things. Um, it put more value on the uh, trading skills, on accounting and what, broker fee management or whatever the one is that reduces your, uh, your broker's fees. So you start off paying a higher tax, but if you train those both to five, you end up paying a lower rate than you did before. Um, so it makes those skills more impactful. That was one thing it did. It also shifted the place that you pay that tax. You see, we have a sales tax and we have a broker's fee. You pay the broker's fee up front when you list your item and you pay the sales tax when it sells. So if you have, let, let's say, a 5% broker's fee and a 5% sales tax for 10% altogether, you list your item and it never sells, well, then you never pay the sales tax and you only uh, pay the 5%, right? But if it does sell, then you pay the full uh, 10%. Okay, so what it used to be that they were evenly divided, 5% and 5%. But under the new taxation system, it's like 3% uh, up front and I think 8% when it sells. So if you put, post an item and it never sells, then you take less of a hit, right? I mean, you still lose a little bit, but not as much. Um, so that encourages, I guess, a little bit more risk-taking from traders. It makes it easier to enter the market. Um, and overall, you'll, you'll spend less uh, if you have the appropriate skills trained to five. If you don't, you pay 1% more. And so to me, the puzzle of this uh, graph is that, okay, you have a lot of people presumably who don't have fully trained or perhaps any trained uh, accounting and broker's fee skills. They're you know, too busy getting, uh, I don't know, Titan laser trained to five or whatever. And, you know, they have a lot of long trains. So they don't want to spend time on that stuff. Um, but it, it seems like if you, if you just have a 1% increase in taxes, you wouldn't get that enormous increase in the impact of this faucet, right? Because that's that's from like uh, 300 billion to about 900 billion off a of 1% change. What is going on here? Um, well, I think what I, I hypothesize what happened is that a lot of, uh, there are a lot more people trading who are not really like committed traders and who don't train those skills to five than you might otherwise expect. Um, I, I think I recall uh, CCP, uh, one of the devs said uh, near the beginning of scarcity era that most uh, orders that are posted are uh, never modified. Of course, you wouldn't do that if you're an uh, active trader, right? So uh, I think what best explains this um, outsized effect is that 
the um, the increase in the uh, uh, fee that you pay on your sales tax and broker's fee falls hardest on people who have not trained those skills, and a lot more people out there have not trained those skills than we might at first uh, suspect. You know, it, you brought up one real good, I, I'd forgotten about that, where uh, the vast majority of market orders aren't adjusted. And I probably fall under that category, because when I put something up, generally, I slap it up for 90 days, and hey, when it sells, it sells. It's it is out of the norm for me to go in and adjust it. So I'm by no means a market trader or an active marketeer. So that may be a little more indicative of what a lot of folk do. Yeah, I think that's right. I think a lot of people are doing that. All right. Uh, any yeah. other comments about this graph? Uh I mean, with transaction tax, uh, tax. Uh, I mean, with bounties, there's no tax with it. But since we got a spike in uh, in the commodity uh, section right there, uh, with the amount of uh, overseer personal effects that we got out of uh, the Winter Nexus event, I think that also has to be taxed as well when you sell them to NBC orders. Uh, but I don't really see like somewhat of a spike here, so I guess it doesn't really matter that much. Um, uh, overall to the amount of transaction tax that we pay uh, as, as a game. Well, I think you may be on to something there, Shen, because while the chronology doesn't line up between uh, the implementation of tax changes and the Winter Nexus event, if you look at the, uh, there's a smaller spike right before it that was associated with, gosh, they do so many of these events, I forget which which one it was now. Uh, I think yeah, the October. Halloween one would have been yeah. two back. That's and right. then the, uh, I forgot the name of it already. Was was there one between the in between the Halloween and the Christmas event? I don't I, think so. I'm just trying to match I think these so. up. Yeah, so the, the last one is the October. That's the Halloween event. And then the Winter Nexus one. The, the chronology does match up between the October event and the uh, the tax changes. So maybe that's it. You know, maybe a lot of people were turning in those uh, overseer effects and paying. Uh, yeah, because you pay the sales tax then, right? Yeah, yeah I think that sale. is correct. Yeah. OK, so if you sell to a buy order, you pay the sales tax, but not the broker's fee because, you know, you're not listing a sell order. Uh, so if everybody's turning in these um, uh, PVE tokens, then you're going to see a lot more transaction taxes, but not much more uh, broker's fees because you don't pay broker's fees on those. Yeah, because there, there are always orders available in B certain BC stations. All right, so I guess overall it just doesn't matter that much <laughs> for some reason. Or another theory that I kind of have is a lot of people have the um, the skill that affects the uh, direct tax skill, like that skill trained up to five, but they don't have a lot of the broker fee skills or any out other skills like those ones where you need to modify orders uh, to train up to five. So what they end up doing is when they sell directly or immediately, they don't pay that much tax. But if they're um, doing a lot of modifying, then I guess they, they do. That's one thing I can see. But yeah, we are not seeing as big of a spike uh, in commodity compared to transaction tax for sure. Yeah, and I just want to mention while you uh, you bring up that relist uh, fee that, you know, when that fee was introduced, it was very formidable, and it discouraged a lot of people from uh, managing their sell orders as actively as they had in the past. But uh, over a number of patches, gradually over the last year, 18 months, however long it's been since they uh, implemented that changes, the relist fee has been reduced. And I was looking at this the other day, and... Currently, you pay about one-third of 1% 1 of the total value of your item in order to relist it. So, well, you don't want to be sitting there every, you know, updating every five minutes like people used to do in, in the old days. Um, if you have a 250 million-esque order that you're trying to move, you know, it might make sense. It might make more sense to pay the relist fee and just move it than to have that much is just sitting on the market doing nothing, getting buried by other orders, right? I don't think it should. Um, I don't think it should dis discourage people from uh, relisting their their items and changing the price to be more competitive, in the same way that it 
it used to. You, you still need to think about it a little bit, but you know, don't let it scare you. Yeah, and if you're on the again taking, I'm going to use myself as an example again. I'm lazy. Everybody knows that, um, and I'm looking at. Ah, do I want to load this up and take it X number of jumps to a market hub? Or do I just want to sell it for, you know, 90% JITA to high sec buyback and let somebody else deal with it? So, <laughs> so players have options. Yeah. Um, or, hard to argue I mean, with that. another thing, maybe just a commodity um, uh, things, they don't really take up that much um of the sales tax uh, portion, right? Because the sales tax or tr the transaction tax uh, includes every items, right? They include modules, ships, um, everything. Uh, but the commodity is only part of that. So maybe just compared to that, uh, the commodity is just a really, really tiny portion. So it doesn't even affect uh, what we see on the MER at all. Well, typically the commodity um the commodity uh, impact would be fairly small, but during those events, you know, it can get pretty uh, sizable. Yeah, maybe just even with the event, maybe it's still small. Who knows? Uh, uh, I I don't know if we do really get a graph or like analysis on what the percentage of each item, let's say, uh, ships counts, let's say, fifty percent of the transaction tax uh, or something like that. Um, uh, now, one I, of the one of the think... folks in uh, chat, uh, Joe uh, Joe Booth twenty three, <clears throat> brings up that there was the ninety percent drop uh, for PVP during Crimson Harvest, so those wouldn't factor into destruction numbers. Actually, destruction numbers would be less for PVP, but potentially ISK moving by selling those items might help. Yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Well, all right. Do we have any other uh, comments on this graph? Uh, I think I'm good. Well, just again, look forward to uh, both this month and next month uh, graph. Uh, we, we are having two events basically uh, right after each other. All right, we have the... Um, Doctor Who event starting tomorrow, and we have the uh, Angel or what's the yeah the uh, Valentine's Day event starting in February. So uh, I think the commodity uh, will stay up that high for at least for those two months. Maybe in March it's going to drop down until the uh, Easter event. Yeah, we can expect to see some similar uh, spikes in the future, in the near future. Uh, can we go to the money supply graph? All uh, right. Yeah, I kind of fat fingered that. <clears throat> All right, there you go, sir. Okay, so the story here is just that there's uh, an ever increasing amount of ISK in the game, as we can see. And the reason is that when uh, CCP runs an event, it drops a PVE token, whether it's a, a clone blank or overseer's effects or you know whatever they're they're calling it. It's the same story every time. You blow up the bad guy, they drop the thing, you put it in your cargo hold, you take it to an NPC station, and there's a, a buy order there. You turn in the token, you get ISK back. Okay, so more and more ISK is entering the game in this, in this way because CCP is doing a lot of these events, right? And some of them, like the Winter Nexus, are quite uh, popular. So uh, the total amount and the amount for characters is trending up noticeably over the last couple of months. But if we go to the velocity of ISK graph, which I believe is the next one, we can see that there has been a modest trend upwards in velocity of ISK over the last uh, two months, but you know it's still pretty low. Um, Basically, folks are sitting on their ISK, is what it sounds like. Yeah, that's that's what I think is is the implication of putting these two graphs together. People run the event, they get the token, they turn it in, and then the ISK just sits in their wallet. Um, why is that? Well. You need. Um, Would uncertainty play into it? Where they folks are just want, waiting to see how things are going to shake out for the next couple months with all the changes. Well, if you're if yeah. you're doing trade or industry, you might very well prefer to be liquid right now because 
like you don't want to be sitting on a hangar full of I don't know a hundred billion s worth of raw materials if you think the price of raw materials is going to drop ten percent over the next month, right? That's going to cost you ten billion isk. So you know, might not want to uh, you might not want to be acquiring new raw materials. You might say, well, let me just uh, manufacture a little bit less right now. Uh, you know, you might take a wait and see. Um, attitude. If you're doing PVE and you're running these events, um, you know, like let's say PVE is your main gameplay, what do you have to spend ISK on? Well, you, you get the ship that you want, you get the best modules that you're willing to spend for, which, you know, for most people would probably be the uh, X types, which is right below the officer modules. But, you know, once you've blinged your ship all the way out and you have all the ships you want, um, you don't have much reason to well, you could buy uh, skill injectors and so forth, I suppose. Um, but what's, uh, one, another thing that will drive your spending is if you, your ship gets blown up, right? So if your ship doesn't get blown up, you're going to tend to spend less, uh, less ISK. Um, likewise yeah. for, for PvP. You know, if people aren't fighting as much, their ships aren't getting blown up as much, they don't have to buy new ones to, uh, to replace them. Go ahead, Shen. Yeah, so I guess just really reiterate for people. So... Let's say if your goal uh, is to get, let's say, Omega every month with just your ratting, then your goal is becoming that. But let's say if you're ratting more and more and start using better and better ships, uh, let's say you upgrade it from a rattlesnake to a carrier, that means you have more and more ISK in your wallet, right? And right now you have ISK left over other than just paying for your Omega time every month. And from there, then people tend to have goals for themselves. And that can include more bling ships, better modules for the ships, uh, more doctrine ships, uh, whatever, what they have a uh, desire to do PvP, right? So when people have more is the velocity of is tends to go up. Uh, and then that's what we kind of see at the tail end of the uh, right there a little bit going up uh when people have when people have money they will they're willing to spend it well when people don't they don't have the options right so but we're not seeing as much i guess of a uh, climb as we were seeing from the previous graph right. and i think that's the contrast that we're seeing here yeah so what we're seeing is that people have a lot more isk and they're spending a little bit more right so what this indicates to me is that people don't have things to spend their ISK on. I mean, of course, there are things in the game that they can spend it on, but I mean things that are attractive to them, things that they want to spend their their ISK on. Um, I think, part, and I think a lot of that is related to uh, to PvP. Um, PvP is a net uh, loss for most players. I mean, there I suppose are ways to profit from it, but for most PvPers, most of the time, it's costing them ISK. They have to do other things to. Uh, replace their losses. But if you're not taking as many fights, then you're not losing as many ships, and so you don't need to replace them as often. Uh, PVEers, you know, as we've said, have less need to spend ISK as they approach completion of their goals, unless uh, somebody comes and destroys their ship, which means that would be PvP, right? So um, I think the, the root issue here is a uh, uh, lack of uh, PvP of attractive PVP opportunities, such that people say, I am willing to risk my ship in order to participate in this activity. And then inevitably, some of them do risk, or, you know, they do lose their ship, and then they have to go and replace it, and that gets that uh, velocity of, of ISK going. So I think we need more fighting, more destruction, uh, more exploding spaceships, because, you know, most of the things that manufacturers manufacture, they're, they're what? They're, they're uh, equipment for fighting. For PvP, so people are doing less fighting, then all that stuff is going to pile up on the markets. It's going to move, uh, you know, less quickly. So I think we've got. Um, I think the the root issue here is a kind of a stagnant PvP meta, um, and part of that is related to the reasons that you know the PvPers will will tell us if we talk to them. They say, "Oh, it's hacks online. I get blobbed all the time. I don't want to do that kind of content." Well, okay, and another part is. Um, that the whole, uh, you know, suicide dreads thing, that dread bombing is not really a thing anymore because people can't afford to replace the, uh, the dreadnoughts. Now, there were, you know, I think good and proper reasons for um, making dreadnoughts and other kinds of capital ships more difficult to build. Um, it, it prevented people who were doing uh, industry casually from just overproducing this stuff and flooding the market. It, helps make loss more meaningful. Well, all right, but right now the balance is a little bit too far 
towards scarcity, right? You know, I, mean, I, I was wondering, Mal, what do you think about what you just brought up on the, uh, uh, you know, not wanting to risk the, you know, dropping 50 dreads on something. And it's like, well, when I, when I look at the, the graph of character holdings of ISK, the ISK is available. It's the willingness to do it. So their their personal value of that ship, the view of it has changed. Yeah. Well, it might be uh, just that, you know, it, it always takes a while for people to figure out what the new environment is, to figure out where their comfort zone is. And we are in a rapidly changing environment. But also you might be less willing to uh, to engage in, in that kind of PVP if you think that the dreadnought prices will fall. Right. Um, so, but you know, I'm I'm not really a dreadnought pilot. I can't uh, speak from firsthand experience about that. But I I think that see one way we can tell that that it's related to the uh, the capital BPO changes is when that velocity of ISK starts to fall, which is about at that uh, same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, which was you know the April April is when they announced it, and you can start seeing that drop off when it hits in May. Right. And then you have an increase because there was an event at that time. There was a stimulus where CCP gave people a bunch of, you know, just ISK for a login campaign. There was a tax holiday. Um, so all those things drove velocity of ISK back up toward the late summer. Then it's been trending downward since. Now we just had this big event that was very uh, well received. So people got more ISK and they spent a little bit more. Um, but we, you still you can see the velocity of ISK is still never really recovered from the uh, BPO changes because you have a lot of people who you know uh, flying dreadnoughts was their gameplay and they feel rightly or wrongly that that's not viable anymore and they're you know they're not doing it so you know we've discussed there are good reasons that those industry changes had to happen but it's still the case however you evaluate those changes that it took a lot of the uh, a lot of the steam out of the economy, and that's still a, you know, a gap that we're waiting to uh, to see filled. Yeah, so to your point, I mean, PvP, I think, is definitely one of the factors uh, in the loss of risk. Uh, I mean, with all of that uh, m money that's being destroyed, with the stuff that's being destroyed, some people have to replace them. Uh, either it's you or your alliance, uh, or however uh, people do that. Uh, but I think we'll see that later on in the destruction numbers to confirm uh, or to change that thought uh, when, we, when we are seeing uh, those numbers. But I, I think the second point that you brought up is the one that kind of hits a lot of players. Um, that because of the price of the big toys or those uh, blinging ships, uh, those dreadouts, those uh, carriers, those faxes, or sometimes the titans and the super carriers, that those prices are going skyrocketing uh, ever since the April change. Right. So with that, a lot of people were looking forward to, let's say, their first dread, uh, first carrier, or their second or their third one. Right. Uh, but now it either it's going to take them longer to save up or they just lack the desire, right? So some people may choose a Marauder instead, right? With a Marauder buff and the nerf to Dreadouts, right? So the com perfect combination of those two, maybe they can work together and make someone just think, there's no need ending the Dread. Marauder can do my job uh, efficiently uh, enough, right? For writing, for missions, uh, especially in high sec for missions, for sure. But in low sec, sometimes doing DD sites and doing writing can be just done as well in a Marauder than in a Dreadout. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, excuse me. So, Evil Online is kind of oversupplied with manufactured goods at the moment. And uh, what, what we need to fix it's And the problem is, is not the reason the economy is sluggish is not that there isn't enough materials in space or that people can't mine it fast enough. I mean, my impression is that that has basically been resolved by the uh, doubling of ore quantities in space and buffing the exhumers. Though, as we said earlier, it's going to take people a while to you know fully get into that groove. Nevertheless, the the materials are there. The issue is weak demand as a result of weak destruction. And the answer is to create a PvP meta that makes people want to risk their ships and will and be willing to endure that meaningful loss as the price 
of participation. Then when people are losing their ships, uh, they have to replace them. Then there's more of a demand for uh, manufactured goods, thus for raw materials. And the, all of that creates that ripple effect. And that's what gets that velocity of this going in the right direction, get the economy uh, growing again, which is you know what I think uh, most of us are hoping for. Yeah, and with uh, supplies, demands, um, with lower prices for ships, I think there's a um, there's going to be a less velocity of ISK in terms of the, each price per unit, right? So if a meaning we're selling for two hundred million and that's they're selling for one seventy five, then of course you uh, we lose the ISK velocity there for a little bit. But what that increases is, is the barrier to entry, right? Some people may only have one hundred seventy five ISK, may can only buy the whole of a meaning, right? So um, that maybe increase quantity, but lower the uh, ISK for each unit. So that's going to be interesting dynamic that we're going to see in the future uh, to say, um, or with the words from CCP that we're going to, uh, well, quote unquote, go back to, uh, well, and, well, not end, uh, what's the word? Um, starting the redistribution phase, I think, that more resources will be available. Uh, the one we just saw in December was the first step, I guess. Uh, I mean, with that, I hope uh, more the price of some ships can go down, uh, with, and that means more players can participate in those uh, metas and in those PvP uh, environments that they enjoy. Yeah, per perhaps as the price of participation lowers, uh, people will be, you know, will be more inclined to participate as it's less risky. Um, I mean, my feeling is that the, the way to solve this is to is to create a more interesting PvP environment where people will be more willing to endure that uh, that risk. But you could attack the problem from uh, from either angle. And um, so, given that you know more and more raw materials are entering the market, and that uh, supply is strong relative to demand, and I I don't think there's any. I don't know any reason that that would change over the next couple of uh, months as you know, raw material prices continue to, uh, to fall. And I don't think we've had any indication of a major PVP shakeup uh, from CCP. So, you know, if that analysis is correct and uh, no new major inter uh, factors intrude, then I would expect to see a rather sluggish economy over the next couple of, of months you know it might might uh <clears throat> and absolutely agree with that point but sometime toward the end of january we should be hearing about quadrant one and that so be curious to see where that's going to take us you know what you just brought up you know is there going to you know what kind of changes that are going to incentivize folks to get out there and shoot each other again Right. So uh, when CCP, in, in early December, CCP made two announcements. One was for the new quadrant and one was for the beginning of the redistribution phase. And those things happened at the same time, but they're not the same thing, right? Uh, redistribution could stretch into uh, quadrant one for the, the year that we're currently in. We don't know. I mean, CCP said early in December that uh, Scarcity firmly ends in quadrant four of 2021. Uh, looks like that has not happened. Why? Well, because uh, part of the the plan for uh, for redistribution was to fix the R fours and to uh, work in uh, compression as a part of the work wall rebalance, right? But the R four and compression changes have been sent back to the drawing board, and we still have uh, beyond that. They've been talking about dynamic distribution um, in NullSec, where you'll be able to uh, install upgrades on your sovereignty structures and uh, customize the space so that it gives you a little bit more of this kind of material um, as opposed to another kind. Uh, it, it's all very sketchy. We don't know exactly what it will consist in, but they, what they've said consistently is customizable space. That's the form that... Uh, we can expect resource uh, redistribution to uh, to yeah. take. They, they've talked in the past about procedural generation of resources, but it's it's been a while since they said anything about that. Maybe maybe that's uh, not in the offing anymore. Um, in any case, that's the agenda for the next three or four months at least. 
you know, I, I have a feeling that's going to be agenda for 2022. I think redistribution, tweaking of it, changes, updating is going to go well into the, you know, past the mid of the year. That's just my guess. Yeah, and, you know, I think it would be really cool. Like, what if you, you mine this system really intensively and the ore spawns, uh, responds uh, less vigorously there because it's all been mined out? Right. And, but so in the system next door, maybe people haven't been mining for a while. So uh, uh, the respawn rates are higher. It's more lucrative. So then you move over there. You get that um, uh, feedback loop like in the dynamic uh, bounty system. Yep. All right. What do you got yeah. next, man? You want to pop over to that last one? Oh, I. I uh, yeah, well, that's just another. Uh, sure, you can uh, bring that up. That's just another uh, representation of the velocity of ISK graph. That's from. Uh, oh, that's actually on the. Um, okay, well, let me. I'll tell you. Let me give a, a short intro because I think uh, for that because I think a lot of folks may be interested in it. What we're going to show now this actually comes from Matthew from the Eve Oz community. Somebody earlier on, and I forgot your name already, asked about uh, you know. Jesus is kind of worthless if we can't see it over time. Well, we can. And let me pull this up. And there's a Oz, Eve Oz Discord community that uh, has tremendous work like this uh, on there that they, they put up. Did not ask for permission to share the link to it. You know, so we're just going to kind of show you what it is. You can always hit their Discord or check them out. Yeah, and the um, the graph that I wanted to look at for that is under uh, page. Oh, let, let's see. Hold on. Oh, I've got it. So trend analysis. It's right here. I've got trend analysis mining value, and as you see, this goes back two years. Um, uh, did, were yeah. you looking at the mining? Which one did you want to see? Um, gosh, which one is it? Oh, I just turned it off, so it's overall. Uh, that, uh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's another right. representation of the velocity of ISK uh, graph. But what's really cool about this website, though, is that it will break down the. It will show you that. Um, I don't know, that uh, XY axis graph on a region to region basis. You can only get those on the CCP site for the uh, the economy as a whole. But if you want to know about the action, like let's say you just live in Sink Laison and you trade out of Do Dixie and that's the market you care about. Well, you can find what the trend is there. And that's not always going to track with the trend in, in GIDA, which is mostly what the uh, CCP's MER uh, reflects. But if you pop over and look at this, uh, the, the information and the way they have it organized is tremendous amount of work uh, put in. You know, if you want to look at just NPC bounties in Outer Passage for a specific time frame, you can do it. and It'll tell you by quarter what you got. One of the big ones we were talking about earlier was mining and mining values. And let me pull that up. But again, you know, you can see the pop, you can see the spikes, the amounts. And I'm trying to find the one that I had up earlier when Ren and I were looking at it, or Shen and I were looking at it, that it gives year to year comparison back to, you know, side by sides. Oh, yeah. So that's at the bottom. Uh, if at the bottom row, it's the last very, very bottom. And as you see mining, production, all that stuff. Yeah. So if, let's say, you want to go to mining, uh, that's ah, here we go. Yeah, so um, what that yellow graph there shows is the year-over-year -year analysis. So that's a comparison of where we were, where we are this month versus where we are the uh, a year ago. So, I mean, if you just look at it intuitively, you would think it's month to month, but that's not what that yellow line is. That's what the uh, the deep green bars are behind the yellow line. Right. That's like if I if I month. yeah, if we look at uh, November, you can you can hone in on it by just clicking on November. It's going to change the graph to and the the darker green is the current year and the lighter is 
you know, November 2021. So there's actually a little more, and you can see the amounts, and they got it broke down just about any way you want to look at it. Pretty, pretty solid work. And do we have the link for this? Um, I did not get permission to share it. I didn't ask the question in time. Well, I guess uh, let's see if we can get that, and then we'll put it in the Discord. Maybe. Oh, absolutely. But yeah, it's the uh, Eve Oz is and Matthew over there did like I think the lion's share of all this work getting it up. Yeah. Yeah, so with all those events uh, that's repeatedly uh, happening every year, right? The Winter Nexus, uh, the Valentine's Day event, the Easter event, all those stuff. So we can, so that won't disrupt the graphs all that much, right? Because this is compared month by month. So all those events will happen this year and they will happen next year. So that's if uh, I really like the fact that they repeated them or instead of doing, let's say, random events. Uh, so maybe next year when we're looking at when we're looking back, uh, is that we're doing a crossover in January that normally wouldn't have an event in. Uh, so maybe we're going to see anomaly there. Right? Normally, this, uh, I guess this site can tell a really good uh, data in terms of uh, all those mining, production, all those different things. But maybe next January, we're going to look back and see there is anomaly here. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like it if there were... Um maybe fewer of these events and more um, more customized with more variation so that it would be more of an event, right? Because we've had, um, we're going to have like, what, five back-to-back -back by the end of the season here? It starts in October and it goes into April, and you basically have co continuous events uh, throughout that part of the, uh, of the year. Uh, they drop basically the same goods. You fight basically the same bad guys. Um, you know, I'd like to see more variation, maybe fewer of them, so that you know, so it's more special, it's more uh, exciting, you know. Or maybe spread them out a little bit too. I think with the idea is that uh, if you look at the pattern of those, of those event, um, I mean, after the bunny event, right in um, in the Grista Easter event, uh, after that, the next event will be in October, if I'm not mistaken? Is there any events in between? No, right? So I think what CCP here is trying to do is that they're trying to avoid uh, the summer bump. Uh, because every time during this event, you will get some sort of special skins, right? So this time, um, uh, you, you got all those uh, uh, beautiful skins uh, from the Winter Nexus event for those faction cruisers, right? For the last Crimson Harvest event, well, it depends on which side you chose. Um, that you either get a Blood Raider one or some of the faction uh, or the Navy faction uh, Amara ships, right? So I think what they're trying to do is stagger all those events during the winter season, right? Starting in October, basically ending in April, and leave the summertime for people to travel so they don't miss out on those special skins. Right. That's just my theory on it. No, I think that's it's reasonable to think that. I mean, if you're going to do an event, it's the same man hours to create it in the summer as it would be in the winter, but you have more people logged on in the winter. So, you know, it's going to be more impactful uh, then. So, that I guess I suppose is a sensible way to allocate the uh, uh, the labor. That said, you know, so each one of these events is like a little stimulus to the economy, and you know, as a trader, I hardly I can hardly object to that. But what I really want is for the underlying issues with the economy to be fixed. I don't I don't want us to have to limp from event to event to event to keep trade happening in New Eden. I want you know there just to be a steady. Uh, well, not necessarily consistent, but um, like, like I don't want the, all these short-term band-aids. You know, I want the systemic issues to be fixed, and so that you have long-term sustainable uh, vibrancy in the activity. That, excuse me, in the economy. That is, after all, our the stated goal of CCP's development plans over the last. Uh, a couple of years, setting Eve up for a third decade, uh, for Eve to outlive us all. You know, they're talking about longevity, sustainability. Well, all right, all these, these events, you know, they are good in their own way. There are short-term, um, well, I mean, there are events. An event is a short-term occurrence. What I really want to see is a, is a system that works. And I, I have a sense that um, that the, the temporary stimulus effect of these events is obscuring 
some underlying structural problems with the economy that would be more apparent to us if we didn't have uh, these events. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't. I kind of. I already know that they're there. I don't want them to become more apparent. I don't want more pain and suffering for you know capsuleers. We've had plenty of that over the last two years, but um, I just don't want that to be a substitute for fixing what's wrong with the economy, which, as near as I can tell, is. Uh, it's just not enough PVP, not enough destruction. Make make P, a PVP environment that is sufficiently compelling, and people won't mind getting their ship blown up. They'll they'll risk their ship to participate. Yeah. So, uh, just like the chat, uh, just credit to uh, Sav Savors, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, that we uh, did have uh, Empire events. I remember those. Um, I would say those holidays for those empires, and in 2021, the big event I think is the Mimitar one. Uh, yeah, so that is I think one memorable event I would say um, that happened. I mean, for all the other three, you do get locking rewards, but they're not as big I would say as the Mimitar one, where you get ha hacking size, you get uh, a combat size. I think for all those stuff, I think it's pretty cool. Um, but again, those events are not, I will say, as similar. They're more like lore-based and they're smaller sizes if you compare them uh, to, let's say, the Crimson Harvest or the Winter Nexus in the way that that only happens in high sec and part of low sec as well. So it's not like ac accessible through all regions, right? If you look at the Crimson Harvest event, it spawns all over the universe. Um, you can do it in Veil of Silent, you can do it in Stain. It doesn't matter. But for those... Um, for those other uh, empire events, you can only do do them in their corresponding empires uh, a space. Hmm. Well, I mean, I suppose I would like to see just from a, a lore and immersion perspective the events to have more of a like a unique theme. Like I thought it was really cool for the Minimitar event that they said whichever tribe gets the most uh, points for participation will put a station down. And I think it was Paytor, which is the uh, capital of the uh, Minmatar Republic. And, you know, so that gave the, the RPers and the uh, the Lord Buff something to look forward to, a little bit of extra uh, impetus to participate. And, you know, you can think of other, other kinds of events like that. Like there was the, what, EOM terrorists were using their oh, yeah. unfit Titan to blow up a, or to do an orbital yeah. bombardment on a planet. You know, that was pretty Yeah, that cool. was an interesting leader. event. I wish they did more with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what if the what if the Amar Empire has a convoy of slave ships going through uh, the faction war zone, and then the Minmatar players uh, find out about it? And they have, you know, their event. Maybe you could have like opposing events, right? Like the Amar, like everybody picks a side, and the Amar players have to go protect the convoy, and the Minmatar players have to, uh, you know, go and liberate their uh, uh, their enslaved kin you know or you know maybe there could be a little bit more of a, a story involved here that's what i'd like to see anyway yeah also giving credit to the trick Laving event right so the latest of all the empire events the totality today um i think that happened in i think late august uh something like that uh i think that's the latest of all five right now it's the empire holidays uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like the uh, the Triglavian event was really cool. Maybe we could do something uh, more with them. The Drifters are really like the Omega threat in uh, New Eden, but they're, they're a little bit too tough for, for the purposes of some of these events. Like, like what are you going to do, have an event where Drifters just, you know, pwn you the second you own, <laughs> you enter this, the... Uh, you know, the dead space pocket. Well, we've had that happen to us <laughs> with those drifters before, so I wouldn't put it past anybody do it again. As yeah, a yeah, doomsday from them, it's scary. I'm going to say, yeah, they're, if they're, I rip into a drifter wormhole, you would know how that feels. Yeah, so the, the drifters are pretty formidable as um, as enemies. The Triglavians, well, first of all, the Triglavians are not enemies from all players' perspectives. Some players are Triglavian aligned. Um, so, you know, I think there's... The, I'd like to see more Triglavian focused stuff, I suppose. I think they're, you know, we've got all this uh, time and effort spent into building up their presence in New Eden and they have their associated technology. Um, I guess this isn't the worst time in the world to make a plug for more Triglavian ships, which are very popular. You, know, you have a Triglavian mining ship. 
No. Or was that transport ship? Remember we saw them in Parchment before? Yeah. Was, right. um, this Very looks pretty awesome. cool, not gonna lie. Well, other than Triglavian ships, what I really want to see um, is actually Angel uh, capital ships, right? Out of all five pirate factions, they're the only one that doesn't have uh, any capital ships or any super caps. Um, I'm I'm always been hoping for let's say, um, angel invasion right similar to the sunshine invasion, uh, but this time it may be special right instead of a Sotio or maybe a Fortizar or maybe an Azbel right or Tartar of some sort, um, it may happen only in certain spaces or it won't happen in certain time of the year something like that like, I I think angel capitals are things uh, one thing that a lot of players has been asking for for a long time, but until nowadays, we we haven't seen any trace of that at all. But wasn't this previewed at a fan fest some years ago? Do you yeah. remember? Um, I'm I'm drawing a I'm, blank, but it, you know they might have uh, might I've have alluded to models. some of that. I've seen models for these ships, and you know people complaining, you know, hey, these things were promised to us. Where where are they? And you know, CCP is has kind of been working its way down a list of some of these long standing promises and, you know, gradually fulfilling some of them, like, uh, like the Nirvana implants, right. People were promised, they called them shield slaves before they were introduced. And now they're, uh, what Nirvana implants. So those were introduced. There have been some other things like that. So, you know, maybe we'll get the, uh, angel. A, yeah, I'll tell you what the, the player wish list is pretty dang long. And some of them are pretty darn complex to shoehorn neatly into the game. But yeah. yeah. Well, I think that was, like I said, there, there are models for these things out there that I, I believe were introduced by CCP. So if they showed it to people, it's reasonable to say, you know, hey, produce the thing. Uh, but then there are a lot of other things where people are just, you know, CCP, please. And they'll never catch up with that, of course. Yeah, I, I think that's very fair to say. Um... It's a pretty long list for sure um, for those caps. Um, get, get rid any... of one S Isking. They got rid of that. We don't like Cloaky Camping. They got rid of that. Um, I personally wrote them complaining about the skill queue because uh, I remember this one time I, I spent 20 minutes loading the thing up and then my connection dropped or something happened and it was all gone. <laughs> you know, I mean, that yeah. used to be a thing. Um, so, you know, there. They are making gradual progress toward, you know, improving the uh, some of the very long list of player gripes about uh, about various parts of Eve Online. They'll, they'll never get through them all, but you know, uh, if we could, you know, while we're working our way through that list, CCP, please, uh, Angel, Angel Capitals would be a cool one. Uh, well, you know, Orchard brings up a good thing out of chat. He says basically more ships are what people have been asking for, and he is correct. He, she, whomever, is correct. I would only modify that to more ships that are, I, I'm going to use the word disposable. Get people out there. Get them not afraid to lose a ship again. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's going to hurt when you lose a ship. There is that sense of loss, but it's not the end of the world, man. Get out there and do it. And, you know, you could also have, you don't have to have like a new ship role in mind. You know, I've, I think I've mentioned before my personal like pie in the sky wish list is for like a black ops mining command ship uh, that like a, you know, jump bridge generator and a covert ops cloak. So, you know, you could be like a proper ninja, uh, ninja miner. Um, but, you know, it doesn't have to be a new ship role. You could also do things like... Uh, you know, instead of just one kind of industrial command ship, uh, well, there, there are three kinds, but they're all from the outer ring excavations. You could have uh, industrial command ship for each empire. Maybe the Amar do things a little differently than the Minmatar, and they have maybe little different bonuses. That could be, you know, cool. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess we're just wish listing at this point. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anything. So on this segment from you guys uh, before we wrap up? Well, I, I covered everything I wanted to talk about in the uh, in the MER. Okay. Um, Gurun, do you have anything to say? 
Uh, not really. Okay. Um, before we wrap up the show, we just have one more thing uh, to mention, which is uh, if you go to Reddit, I think I still see it right now. Uh, so there has been a player uh, who passed away. Uh, so there will be a, a sign of vigil in, on January 15th uh, at 1900 time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this was a member of the Northern Coalition Alliance. So this will be held in their staging system of NSI, but uh, they have a re- arranged so that if you do not ordinarily have access to that system, they will allow you to enter if you need, if you are not ordinarily able to get into that system. There's uh, instructions there in the Reddit post. If you wish to attend and need anything to provide, you know, to get through, to coordinate, who to contact, and, uh, you know, basically so you can get safe passage in and out. Yeah, and and any questions are to be directed to Romulus13, who was the CEO of this person's most recent corporation, Blank Space. Yeah, so that's uh, about that. If you're interested, uh, please join. So 15th will be, uh, I think, on the weekend. So that will be to Saturday. Yeah. Uh, so this is it. any last comments on today's show anything to say anyone well last thing i the only thing i want to bring up is uh uh garv in uh, chat it's like nope we're not talking about aom there's going to be a sunday that's going to be a sunday special they if they both mers coming out we wanted to uh dig into those a little bit today yeah so that's all. And um, today was Wednesday, January 12th, 2022. Good night. All right. Fly dangerous. <laughs>